if we're looking at BYU right now, does this not have just 100% like team of destiny sort of feel to it? Uh, if Oklahoma State, if that finish did not get you on board with BYU being a team of destiny, I, I don't know what would. You've got both of those finishes now, man. Both of those games where, you know, somebody brought up the win probability graphs. They're about as close as you can be to 100% expected to lose from ESPN in each one of those games late waning moments of the fourth quarter, and yet they find a way to win. Uh, I mean, that Oklahoma State drive was pretty damn improbable. They have a fourth and seven that they convert at one time. This one was a fourth and ten, obviously helped out by a controversial penalty, but very, very similar drives here for BYU. It really felt like the game was over. You faced a critical fourth down, had to make a play, get some help, whatever it is that you want to call it and just make some insane plays to pull it out. You know, I, I feel like the Chase Roberts catch that was right after the holding penalty there is a play that should be talked about a lot because that was a close one, man. That was bang, bang, and that was a tough catch. That's a tough play. And you could put it right up there with like Darius Lassiter and the catch and run that he had against Oklahoma State in terms of just like, man, that seemed like a really high degree of difficulty, like kind of improbable sort of play. Not totally, but kind of. So there is that. But it goes beyond just that. If we're going to compare like, you know, Utah's entire season and say, well, it really feels like this is kind of a team of destiny right now. You can also take it back a couple of years to one of the comparisons that's been made quite frequently. And I certainly jumped on board with this early. I'm definitely not the only person or the first but a lot of people started to say, man, like it really feels like BYU has some 2022 TCU vibes. And then sure enough, Joel Klatt, who I just apologized to on the last show, uh, Joel Klatt hopped on board with that. And this was even before the game. OK, Th this was before the game on Saturday for BYU. Joel Klatt says, hey, look, this resume that BYU has right now looks awfully similar to what TCU had in 2022. 8-0, one-score games, uh, beating top 25 teams. And look, even down to what number those teams were ranked that they beat in the college football playoff top 25. Number 13 and 19 versus number 13 and 18. Uh, not ranked in the preseason, coming off a 5-7 and seven season. That's nuts how crazy that similarity is, man. That is wild. It also is like... I would take it a step further and you could go digging deep into like the quarterbacks here. Jake Retzloff was somebody who was not anticipated by most, I think to win the starting job kind of like, Hey, that TCU team, the guy who took the first snap of the year at quarterback was Chandler Morris. It was not Max Duggan, but Morris gets hurt. And then Duggan all of a sudden is the guy takes off, but the veteran in the program, people weren't really all excited about. I don't know that anybody after watching Jake Retzloff last year was really all that excited about him, but he took the reins. It wasn't Gary Bohannon and he has taken it and run with it and been a, a very effective quarterback. Now he's not making quite the run to like fringe Heisman territory that, that Max Duggan obviously did in 2022. He's been pretty effective. I mean, if just like the way these, these teams kind of, go about their business. It feels like a lot of these games have, have transpired in very similar fashions. I, you, the vibes, you know, we decide almost everything on vibes these days. Right. And the vibes certainly would suggest along with the stats, the numbers here that Joel Clapp points out that BYU and TCU from two years ago are very similar. And to take it a step further than even that, just the way that the game ended was very much like that November game that TCU played against Baylor. Now, let's set this one up. It's November. It's a rivalry game. Baylor-TCU, the Holy War, obviously a rivalry game in November. And you went on a last-second field goal in a game where it felt like maybe you deserve to lose. And not only that, but the last-second field goal comes in the rare situation where nobody had a timeout. This was not call a timeout, set things up, make sure everything is good to go deep breath in and out. No, it was the fire drill field goal. Both of them are the fire drill field goal. A little more tense 
in the TCU example from two years ago, but that, of course, was the great call that I reference a lot and I really like. Hypnotoad in a hurry from Jason Benetti, who's, for my money, about the best out there doing it right now. That was that, where they had to rush everybody on there and just get the field goal off, drilled it. Same thing here. Uh, now, it may have been more rushed if, speaking of things you know, Utah should be complaining about, if Kyle Whittingham would not have taken a timeout to save 10 seconds. <laughs> Didn't love that strategy necessarily from uh, Kyle Whittingham. And it gave BYU a little bit more flexibility to run the, the kickoff team out there. But there wasn't much margin for error. You know? I mean, you had to get out there, get lined up, and go. Uh, and, and the field goal, obviously it was, it was no problem. So man, I don't know. It, it really is hard to watch this BYU team and not think, dude, this team is destined to finish the regular season unbeaten. I'm not saying team of destiny, like unbeaten national championship. Okay. I, I don't think that we're getting to that territory here. There's, there, you know, it's just the reality of college football these days, even if there's not really a dominant team in the sport this year. I'm not predicting that. So don't take this too far. But TCU didn't do that either. And they still, you know, made the national championship game, won a game in the college football playoff, finished the regular season unbeaten, even survived losing the Big 12 championship. I, I think this BYU team definitely has that potentially in them. And you to do that, you have to, you have to have to win games like what you had at Utah. You have to win games like what you had against Oklahoma State. There are going to be a couple of those games where you just really got to gut it out. You just got to find a way. They're really good at finding a way. They're really good at finding a way. Now, as I mentioned, rest of the schedule is tricky. So I say, hey, team of destiny, team of destiny. It, they very well could lose to Kansas next week, and you come back and say, well, John, all that seems pretty hokey now that you were pushing team of destiny that that's fair. And that is true. And it's definitely a losable game. I saw one of the lines open up that game, like BYU minus two and a half. Now I also saw Circa, I think had it at minus five, but that tells you like what Vegas thinks about Kansas and how Kansas is playing. And there's not that wide of a gap between the two teams, Arizona state, obviously really healthy team. When Scadaboo is healthy, uh, Arizona state's a really solid team. When Scadaboo's healthy, like they can, they can be very good, very effective. And even Houston, you know, I know BYU fans, whoever it was earlier that mentioned the remaining schedule, didn't list Houston there. I, don't sleep on Houston. Now, yes, I'm a K-State fan saying that. But since they switched quarterbacks to Zeon Chris being the guy primarily, they have won all three games that he's been fully healthy for. And they've won three of four overall, the Kansas game he gets dinged up in. So Houston is, a, a, I think, also a different and better team. You got to think about them in the same kind of way that you think about Kansas. I don't think they're as good as Kansas, even the new version of them. But they are at least a, a team that is a much different version of themselves than what you think of and probably formulated your opinion on earlier in the season about them. So BYU keeps playing with fire here and playing these close games against teams that on paper they probably should not be playing close games with. They can definitely get burned. The schedule is there. That's a hot stove. If they keep doing that, they can absolutely get burned. I'm, I'm not trying to suggest otherwise. But damn, if there's not some real like Disney kind of magic going on with, with what BYU has going right now. And um, yeah, the, the holding call, call it what you will. It was somewhat fortunate, you know, that it gets called for BYU in that situation. It was somewhat fortunate because I do think a lot of crews would have would have let that go even if it was the right call ultimately.